You just heard, I was, this is my second time here. Uh, LeBron did not show up the first time I was here. So this time I even sent an invite on Facebook, tagged his page. Can't tell, I wasn't watching in the back, but I'm hoping that he's here. I don't know. I'm just glad I get to have him. Like, I get to have him like that's a stupid thing to hope for. Green Bay, that's, come on Cleveland. Uh, this was Believe Land. LeBron could be anywhere. <laughs> Oh, this is fun. I am glad uh, that I'm here to do stand-up, because if I was not able to use this microphone I feel, with those fans, I'd be forced to make the choice of character where everyone I'm playing is on fire just screaming so that you can hear it. <laughs> Mom! Where are my good pants? Just every character is freaking the fuck out. Because <laughs> of those fans. Oh! <laughs> really? Weird with the laughs. I can't tell if you're giggling like at me or with me, but we're not really out. We're we'll figuring out that end. And to be honest, I don't care which. Just keep it up. You guys over the uh, are you I guess over your RNC hangover? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What was this? Somebody was like, yeah, like just barely, like just today was the first day. You were like able to see the sun. Oh my god. Is anybody here like Thinking that Trump is like a legitimate person. <laughs> Period. What is staring at me? Yeah, I don't know anybody. Dude, don't yell at me for Trump profile. I'm sorry. Uh, so is that a no? All right, whatever. Here's the thing I, I realized. I don't usually get political, but if, if you're getting like, I feel like this election is breaking people's brains because they just don't know how to reason or <laughs> explain facts and logic to like people that are are supporting Donald Trump. And what I've realized, like, the best way to deal with people who think, like, Trump would be a good president is just to, like, lean into that ignorance. Try to up them. You know, like, ante up. See it and raise it. That's what I say. So when people are like, oh, yeah, you think Trump's going to be a good president? Why are you going to vote for Trump? Uh, I'm going to vote for him because I think he should build that wall. I'm like, well, I'm not going to vote for him because I think he should build four walls and a roof. And <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> In your face! And <laughs> I take all the stupid chips. Now, I took the power away from them. The power of stupidity. That's what it is. That's what he's wielding. I, I don't know why people don't just call that out. Another thing, like people are like, oh, sometimes they don't even give like a reason. Like it, the wall's a stupid reason, but at least it's a reason. Like most of the time they're just like, uh, I'm voting for Trump because I want him to make America great again. And I'm like, well, I just want you to know that Trump actually can't make America great again. He, he can't make America do anything. You know why? Because he's not America's real dad. Uh, <laughs> don't to listen to anything he says, right? <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> guys, use it. Use that shit, right? Stop trying to use facts, right? <laughs> you got to knock that off. Oh, this is such a cool crowd. Is this, are there, there's a lot of people that look like they came with other people. Are those dates? What's your deal? Is this date night for anybody? <laughs> One person lying, all right. <laughs> Nobody else that's here with somebody? This doesn't count as a date, it's Friday night, jeez. All right, whatever. Well, I'm glad I'm not on Family View because that would have been my first answer. <laughs> Hey, all these people that are here in pairs punching each other in a lot of cases, what are they doing? Uh, I'm going to say dates. And shit. I thought I had the top answer on the board. I got an X right off the bat. You know the deal. Steve Harvey needs another guest. My family's like real panicked. Uh, uh, really comfy hostage situation? And shit. You knew that wasn't going to be on the board. Now my family's like, we should have huddled before you said that. <laughs> All pissed off at me. These family feud jokes, I like I like telling those because it lets me feel out who's unemployed in the crowd, right? <laughs> I show it to come on in prime time. You know you're watching that in the middle of the day. 
You might work from home, I don't care. You don't have to put on real pants. That's all it is, right? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not hating on that. That's a sweet gig. You know, you watch Family Feud, it goes to commercial. It's the saddest guy. At the middle of the day, commercials are the worst. They're all like class action lawsuits, shit like that. <laughs> Somebody that just had a GoPro and a cousin that was in college and they made a commercial and paid for it. <laughs> saddest guy in the world comes on, you're a local man, where's the deal? You're like, switch the channel real quick. Where is that guy? He's like in outer space. It's like a white background around it. Is that Aaron Cleveland? I don't know. I feel like, I don't know what mesothelioma is, but I feel like a city that has a river that sets on fire, people should have it here, right? I don't know. I just know, based on The Simpsons, it's probably fish with extra eyes. I don't know. At the very least. All right. Well, whatever. I don't know. You switch, go to that commercial. You don't want to get depressed. You're already home in the middle of the day. So you flip the channel, watch Maury for a couple seconds, right? Get some test results. And you flip it back. Which, by the way, wouldn't that be amazing if those two hosts, Steve Harvey and Maury, switched shows for like a week? And Steve Harvey had to read those cards every day? <laughs> they would not. And none of those dudes would handle that news <laughs> that he fucked up reading the card the way that Miss Columbia did. <laughs> Oh my god, this is such a cool show. I got the H4N right there, nice. Captured some good sound. Yeah, I don't know why I called that out. I guess to prove I'm a fucking tech nerd. <laughs> Give a shout out to whoever has good gear. I don't know, whatever. So this is not date night for anybody. We were clear on that. These are all cold, hard transactions, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Let's take your cousin to a comedy fest night. I don't know what Cleveland has going on, whatever. Just at the RNC, there's probably some people here that would come to I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you could tell but when I was doing the impression of somebody that was uh, a Trump supporter before, I used a little bit of a southern accent. I feel like that's the accent that all of us use when we're telling a story and trying to make the person that we're talking about sound stupid, right? But what happens when the person, when the person telling the story, trying to make the person in the story sounds stupid, already has a southern accent. What accent do they use, right? How do they, you're already using the accent we all use. It's like, oh, this is a stupid person. I can tell by the accent, right? <laughs> I'm getting really weird with you guys. This is so cool. I figured you guys want some off-the-cuff shit, right? Woo! Whatever. All right, nobody's here on a date. This is going to be weird if you guys answer differently to this question. Make some noise if you hear somebody you're in love with. That is so casual. That is so, he that is hesitant. That's almost, that's like, <laughs> that's clapping for someone who just beat you in a category you were nominated for. Level of applause, like, yes. Congratulations. It's a great piece of work they did. All this off. That's the most spiteful I've ever heard anyone respond to asking a crowd of people make some noise if you hear someone you're in love with. What usually happens is you get like a range of applause. And what's fun about that is it tells me a ton about the personal scenarios that everyone in the room has going on at the moment. Like, and they don't get to scope it out because they're all looking in the same direction at me and they don't get to see how everyone else reacts. But it's awesome because some of the times I get to be the bearer of bad news and tell people like, you made a lot of noise, but person you're with, <laughs> not so much. Like, they were not <laughs> into that question. They were like, play, sometimes people try to play dumb. Like, they try to outsmart the question. Like, what did he say? I didn't hear him. I didn't, where are my keys? I don't know, like, trying to put <laughs> it anything. It doesn't work. I'll keep persisting. <laughs> trying to cause some breakups right there. Sometimes, and it happened here, it's people that are just like exhausted, just like, well, I don't, yeah, I guess, I don't know, like you're, like you're at a graduation ceremony and your last name starts with X or something weird, <laughs> like you're Professor Xavier, It's <laughs> the only person I can think of with the name that with X, I don't know why I did that, but the most special couples, when you ask a room of people <laughs> to make some noise if they're there with somebody that they're in love with, the most special couple, or couples, maybe there's more, are the ones where they both make a shitload of noise. Like, they're obnoxious. They might even woo, which, by the way, I, 
I love that. I hope you just woo no matter what the question is or where you are. Like I can see you at the grocery store. They're like, oh man, did you see these chicken nuggets are all on sale? Like, woo, 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 woo. Okay, whoa, hey. Enjoy your meth. I'm gonna take my chicken nuggets. Let's have a good, good weekend. But what I was saying about those couples where they both go crazy when you ask them to make noise if they're there with somebody they're in love with, it's so special when you see them because you know, just based on that reaction, you know right then and there that one day uh, one of them's going to murder the other one because that's the only way that that kind of love ever plays out, by the way. <laughs> that's that kind of love. If I can't love them, nobody will. <laughs> no one will. Gonna have a whole marathon on Discovery ID about your relationship, <laughs> right? <laughs> Bring Nancy Grace out of retirement. I don't know what she's doing. I, don't know. I am so weird with you guys. You guys watch a lot of TV? I do. I don't do shit besides this and watch TV. And, and a day job, which I guess, I mean, it's just watching YouTube, I don't know, and then scrolling up, <laughs> scrolling up, or clicking another tab when uh, somebody walks by, I don't know. Right? <laughs> but I watch a lot of TV. My, one of my favorite shows is Lockdown. Have you ever seen Lockdown? <laughs> like, yeah, it's about prison. I love that show. <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm going to this joke. I love that show, and uh, they do marathons of it all the time on weekends. So all the friends come over, we watch Lockdown. It's awesome. It's the best. And sometimes we like to like, we'll get into almost like hypothetical role playing questions where like a buddy of mine, most obvious one will be like, hey, Ross, if you were on lockdown, what do you think like the worst part about prison would be for you? Which is such a stupid question. Like for me, look at me. I mean, obviously the worst part about prison for me, obviously, we still don't find out how ticklish I am, right? right? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, my cellmate, he's going to find out first night. He will. Lights out, he's going to find out. Because I got a real ticklish butt. He's going to find out, right? Thank you for liking that joke. Stop telling it for a while because it's so dark. But you guys were weird, so I was like, I'll just do some weird shit. <laughs> I wrote more and it does get darker. What's the, you know what's worse? Is when, so, when one person finds out you got a real ticklish spot, what do they do? They tell everybody else. <laughs> They're like, does this tickle? Does this tickle? They haven't got to see for themselves, right? They get a moment of peace, trying to just take a nice shower after you weight lift it or something, and everyone's like, go to the shower, we'll go tickle the shit out of them together, right? And the guy's like, oh, I'm going to tickle his mouth, right? Oh. Why did I do that to myself in that joke, right? <laughs> So why I wish I, I wish those flavored guns were real. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You are such a cool crowd. You ever got you, another show? Since you like my uh, TV jokes, <laughs> I'll tell another one. Another show. There's this uh, Fatal Fatal uh, Instinct. Have you ever seen this show? It's on Animal Planet. It's a show about people who have animals for pets that are animals that should never, ever, ever be pets. Like a guy with a jaguar, for example. And I was watching an episode once. <laughs> uh, so it was like another marathon. I watch a shitload of stuff in marathons, okay? It's what I do, all right? Uh, and I was about to like get up and do something, and the next episode came on, and you know how they like have a teaser right at the beginning that hooks you for the whole episode? Well, this one did it, and it was like the best hook of all time. And it's like a guy, it's like 3 a.m., Brooklyn, New York. A young man is rushed to the hospital with a giant gaping bite wound in his thigh. He tells people at the hospital, whatever, I'm fucking it up, but he tells people at the hospital that he was bit by his dog. But it was a Bengal tiger that he had in his one bedroom. <laughs> Marcy a project. Marcy a pro Marcy project building. That's what it was. A Bengal tiger in a project apartment building. Like, I know that there's a lot of, like, so I, I've never lived in a project building, but I know that had to have the least amount of rats any project building has <laughs> ever had. Ever. I wouldn't even complain. I would be like, well, that one guy has this amazing subwoofers in his apartment. I don't know what that is. So it's like some DMX album. <laughs> all the time. Rattling the roof. I'm like, the roof or whatever, the walls, I don't know. Why did I get so weird at that? But anyways, 
if I, I would love to see the doctor uh, taking that report, right? <laughs> and see what they said when that guy just got just missing most of his thigh. Most of it. It's, it's a tiger. And he's like, uh, I was bit by my dog. <laughs> And that person had to go, what kind of dog do you have, right? The only answer I would have accepted if I was the doctor is if that guy was like, uh, my dog is Clifford the Big Red Dog. <laughs> 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 right, thank you guys for your time. I'm Ross Williams. You guys are awesome.